civilization chosen to remove the bed. And uh, we, of course, are simply following them, sometimes without knowledge. And I hope I'm not offending anyone. I have a job to do. Let me do it. The answer is that a man cannot dress as a woman and yet have a beard. But after the beard has been taken off, sometimes, wow, that's a good looking woman, eh? Really, that's a good looking woman. No, no, it's not a woman, it's a man. <laughs> Is it happening in the world today? These are signs easily identifiable which should strike us our hearts and our intellect into recognizing the reality of the world today and when once we recognize these signs that this is the age that Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam warned about then the sensible thing to do is to now apply yourself to the study of the world today, its reality. And that's what we want to do in this retreat. I have spoken slowly. I've taken my time because this is the foundation of the retreat. But if this is the world today, what is the world tomorrow going to be like? Someone can probably now put on the new poster. Islam and the end of history. Do we know where the world is going to? Do we have any understanding of what's the end to which we are moving? If we recognize this to be the last age, it is the function of spirituality to be able to deliver knowledge which otherwise cannot be accessed. A man had to sign a document but he didn't have any light with which to see. So the spiritual master said no problem and he raised his finger and the finger began to glow and he says, no, there you are, you've got the right now, you can sign. Is that spirituality? A man was seen in a town in Trinidad at the time of the pilgrimage. And when the people came back from Makkah, they said, we saw him in Makkah. But how could he be in Mecca when he was here in Trinidad at the time of the pilgrimage? Can you be in two places at the same time? Is that the essence of spirituality? What is spirituality? A man has been blessed with the capacity to heal. And so people come to him knocking at his door day and night. Can you do something for me? I'm suffering from this illness or that illness. And he prays and he blows and you heal. Spiritual healing. Is that the essence of spirituality? No. These are the offshoots 
What is the essence of spirituality? It is the capacity to see what otherwise cannot be seen. In the Quran there are verses with multiple meanings. The Quran says in Surah al nahl Surah number 16, the B. بَعْدَ أُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبِيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And we sent down the book, the Quran. Sent it down on thee, O Muhammad. Allah's blessings be upon him. That this Quran might be tibiyanan likulli shay. That this Quran might explain all things. And therefore that this Quran might not only explain yesterday. And not only explain today. But that this Quran might explain tomorrow. But in order that that explanation of tomorrow, which is in the Quran, can be accessed, you need, number one, to have nur, to be able to see with the internal eye. And number two, you got to do your homework. You got to study the subject as a whole, and that subject as a whole is not confined to the Quran. It also includes external world out there. You have to study that changing world out there. And tonight, it's going to be a long day today. And tonight in the masjid, when we take up Surah al kahf and the passage that Sheikh Mustafa recited, and you of course are going to read from your folders the, the translation and commentary. Allah says that you would find the most learned of all men, the one who has the capacity to understand the world in the age of Dajjal, the false messiah. Because Surah al kahf of the Quran is the only, only, only part of the Quran linked to Dajjal. You would find the most learned of all men, the one with the capacity to penetrate the Quran as it explains tomorrow. You will find him at Majma'ul Bahrain. Majma'ul Bahrain. What's that? You'll find him at the place where the two oceans meet. So in Cape Town, they took me for a drive up the table mountains. And they pointed out to me, they said, this, this is where the two oceans meet. <laughs> well, Imam Baydawi, rahimahullah, explains, as no one else has ever explained. He said, the two oceans, the place where the two oceans meet, where you'll find the most learned of all men, he said, these two oceans are the ocean of knowledge externally acquired. So you've got to observe, as Malcolm X used to acutely observe the external world. The ocean of knowledge externally acquired. So you should be studying what's happening in the world of money. Why is the US dollar collapsing at this time? 
you should be studying monetary economics. The ocean of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge internally bestowed. When these two oceans of knowledge come together and are harmoniously integrated, only then do you have the scholar with the capacity to penetrate what the Quran has to say about tomorrow. It was our good fortune that we were students of such a scholar. Yes, there are unfortunately, even here in Trinidad, those who look down <laughs> upon him. And we feel sorry for them. They do not recognize the greatness of that teacher. When the two oceans of knowledge, the one externally acquired, the one internally acquired, come together, and you use the methodology that I mentioned in ch chapter 3 of this book, now we can go to the Quran so that the Quran can explain to us the world today. In this session, we're only going to give you a taste of what is to come. We'll quote just a few verses of the Quran so that the Quran can begin the process of explaining tomorrow. This strange age, this last age, where are we going? What is the end? What is the culmination? In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Surah number 5 of the Quran, the verse is around 49 or 50. And you'll find that verse in this book, oh, it looks like Jerusalem in the Quran, doesn't it? <laughs> I only got it last night. And it's much bigger than the normal Jerusalem in the Quran. Because the Malay language, they take two pages to say what you can say in English in one page. This is the Malay translation from Malaysia and Indonesia, Singapore. In this book, you'll find that verse. In this book, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world, you'll also find that verse. We Allah gives the command. Listen to the command. And now I can speed up a little bit. you who have faith in Allah. La do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your awliya. Now remember, we have discarded that deficient and defective methodology, eh? the one where you take a verse in isolation, stand alone to derive meaning. We've, we've thrown that out of the window. Do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your awliya, your friends and allies. Ba'aduhum awliya uba. Ba'aduhum awliya uba. When we look at the translations of the Quran, all the translations of the Quran say the same thing. They are friends and allies of each other. So using those translations, let us proceed. Do not take the Jews and do not take the Christians as your friends and allies. They are friends and allies of each other. 